And your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. He said, all these things that the world seek out. They seek out the, all this stuff. Look at the, look at the news. Look at your YouTube, your Facebook page. All this stuff is about getting in shape, showing off your body, men trying to get abs, women trying to get their butts and hips and breasts bigger. It's just all this about showing what they can look like instead of understanding what to be like in the book. He going to take care of you. Look what he said right here. Verse 31. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and yes. all these things shall be added unto you. All of them will be added to you. Don't worry. God wants to see if you want to serve him with love. See if you're not just, just there because of what he's feeding you or clothing. He wants to see. Yes. When you're at your lowest of the low, just like Job was at those in low, he turned it back on God. And God replaced it a hundredfold. Yes, he did. Replaced it. But if you ain't got that faith like Job, when you lose your money, you're going to lose your mind. That's why most of these people kill themselves. Hmm. Go ahead. 32. Fear not, little flock, uh -huh. for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That's it. That's what we're here for. Not for money, not possession, but the kingdom. But we got to support the kingdom. We got to support the truth. We got to. It starts with supporting. Go ahead. Say that ye have and give arms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old. Go ahead. A treasure in the heavens that fadeth not, where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupted. See, this is what you're trying to get to, that treasure that is in heaven. You're not talking about going to heaven. Heaven going to be on earth. He's going to bring heaven here. Along with, his, along with Jesus ruling for a thousand years, then the Father coming after that. That's the treasure we're looking for. Not the treasure of the world. Don't seek after this stuff. Don't let it control you. Mm. Go ahead, brother. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Ask yourself that question. What makes you tick? What makes you serve God? Is it your clothes? Is it your shoes? Is it your job? If he stripped you of all that, will you still serve him? Mm -hmm. believe me, there's a lot of prophets in this book that stripped them a lot of it, and they didn't turn their back. And it can happen to us. Let's go to Haggai. Yeah. 20 it starts with the church. If you really want to understand the flow of God's ministry, it's about support. Support it. If you can't support, hey, don't deal with us. I ain't just saying you, us. Like I said before, if that's what you can give, or the dollar, and you give out of your finances, and that's a lot to you, God said, He said, it ain't nothing to me to judge that, oh, she didn't give a dollar. She didn't give a quarter. That ain't not my job to judge that. That's not my job. All I'm telling you is get you in the right frame of mind so you understand. Don't cheat yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't cheat yourself. And how do you cheat yourself? You try to keep up with the Joneses. You try to keep up with them. Mm -hmm. Man, I was there. They still had to fight that flesh down every week, every day. Mm -hmm. I want to get this stuff and get them going deeper and deeper in debt. For what? For what? Just to say, ooh, look at Jeff. Ooh, look at the clothes, look at the clothes. That's it. That's all people wait, wait on the ooh. Mm -hmm. When the ooh go, goes, heck on the car payment. For four to seven years, sometimes he even got ten years gone. Here come that house, you know. God gave you your house and you paid it all real seven nights and said, man, I want to get a bigger house. For what? Kids are gone, just you and your husband or whatever, then what? Why are you getting a bigger house? But anyway, we taking care of the house of the Lord. I'm going to show you. It's very important to take care of the house of the Lord versus your house and my house. Haggai chapter 1, we're going to start at verse 3. Everybody got Haggai? Yes, I'll turn to your table of contents. <laughs> Go ahead. 
Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, yes, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lay waste? He said, Every time for you to dwell in your sealed houses, you got most people got beautiful houses. But when it comes to the house of the Lord, they don't do nothing for it. They don't do anything for it. Like I said, he put down to the two He's riding around in the same bed. You ride around in a big truck. I know you pay a lot of money for that thing. Because I pay a lot of money for mine. It costs money. But when it comes to, to the Word of God and the support of the ministry, dollar, two dollar, water, sometimes net. Go ahead. Verse 5. Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. He said, consider your ways. Now I want you to be wise about this. I want you to make sure you understand what's going on here. I'm watching. Go ahead. You have sown much and bring in little. Mm -hmm. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. But you have not enough. Mm -hmm. Ye drink, but you are not filled with drink. Mm -hmm. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with coals. Understand what he's saying here. He said, you accumulate all this stuff, but it still don't feel that void. You still hungry. Mm -hmm. You still need clothes. You still earning wages, and you ain't got no money to make it till the next week. Why? Go ahead. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Mm -hmm. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build a house. Yes, sir. And I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, says the Lord. He said, build my house. Build it up. Put forth your finances, whatever you can toward this house and build it up. And I will help you. Go ahead. Ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. Mm -hmm. And when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, says the Lord of hope, mm -hmm. because of mine house that is waste. And ye run every man unto his own house. He said, you wait, my house is wasted. Why? You going out there, putting all these things inside of your house, living this lifestyle, and you wondering, why you can't hold on to it? I blow on it. I blow on it. Just like you come check the seat and tie. How do you fall about me? Because guess what? God, it's gone for the year coming for the next income tax time. All day long, this stuff happened, I see it. Why? Because they neglect to do what God wants them to do. You look good, you're balling for a minute now. Y'all look good. <laughs> look good. All the restaurants sold out. All the clothing stores, they can't be closed in. Why? He, he come take time. When folks get an increase on their job, first thing they do, I'm going to treat myself. This is what it is. How long? How that will mean? I'm not even talking about y'all. I'm talking about me. I put myself on the top of now. First. This is what he tells me. Be in my house. Support my ministry. Mm -hmm. Support it. Then I open it up. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 10. Therefore the heaven, therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. He telling you right the heavens over you. A lot of people forming crops. Or even on your job, you're trying to get this promotion or whatever. You're trying to get something from God. It just all of a sudden dries up. If you don't have water to water your crop, they don't grow. If you don't have people to help you on your job, and they say, well, I ain't got time to help her or him, and you don't learn what you need to learn, guess what? You're going to get fired. And you wonder, what, why, why all this happened to me? Why he don't like me? Why she don't like me? Because of the book. Go ahead. And I call for a drought upon the land, mm -hmm. and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hand. He said upon men, people. I want y'all to make sure y'all, he's not just talking about the vegetation. This is what they did back then. This is more money to them back then, of growing crops. This is how you trade. If you ain't got no crops, you can't trade. You can't get no money. 
He said, I put all this upon men. Because men back then, they were the bread workers. Now, these ladies and gentlemen today, boy, I feel sorry for y'all when these are right here lazy. Lazy. These cats will not get a job. They won't go out here and help you. Anything. You have these babies by these dudes and leaving you with it. And you wonder why? He operating in the will of God. But you got to know who you're choosing. I don't know where that came from, but I'm just telling you. <laughs> this is what it's all about right now. But we got to take care of the house of the Lord. And I want to let you know, this is not talking about an Israel land. They're talking about over here in our enemy lands too. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 11, and verse 16. You know, you got some old small that and I got that. That's talking about Israel over there in the land. They're talking about the temple back then. They ain't talking about now. But I got a sanctuary all over the place. Ezekiel chapter 11. Verse 16. We got a job and responsibility to handle the business of God. We got to. And I want to make sure I don't hinder y'all from receiving your blessing. So we're dealing with, I'm going to let you, just want to make sure you see that this is not just talking about over there in Israel. It's talking about in, in, in this land right here, all over the world. It's a sanctuary we got to take care of. Verse 16, go ahead. Therefore say, thus says the Lord God, mm -hmm. although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yes, sir. yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. He said, I cast Israel. He's talking about Deuteronomy chapter 28. I cast y'all in y'all enemy's lands. Mm -hmm. If you got some understanding, why we were cast, why we are being treated the way we treated, because we broke the laws of God. And he cast us over here under these Europeans. He said, I will be a little sanctuary to you in your enemy land. Meaning, I'm going to have a little church. They're going to set up. It's up to you and me to support it. Go ahead. Therefore say, thus says the Lord God, I will either gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries yes, where ye have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. So we know he's not just talking about Israel. He's going to gather you. We know when that day comes, like we celebrate the Feast of Tabernacle. He gathers us on that day. But most people don't understand it because these Sunday churches ain't teaching nothing about no holy day, they ain't teaching nothing about no laws, no statutes, no nothing. They just going to church having fun. All you can say, what the preacher preach about? I don't know, child, but that choir was rocking. <laughs> we had a good time. They tell me, man, y'all read too much of that Bible now. I said, man, what you here for? You here for one thing and one thing only. We have a congregational gathering to learn how to what? That's it. You here to learn how to say your soul. Period. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6. God loves a cheerful giver, man. We ain't cheerful about giving this. Just keep it to yourself. Just keep it to yourself. I tell people all the time. You might as well just get, keep it to yourself because you're personally. Ain't no blessing going to come to you. People holding money so tight. You can't let nothing get in your hand. You just hold it. Two to three dollars, five dollars, twenty dollars. Man, no, I'm gonna hold it for him. He got it up. It ain't about me at all. It's about supporting the ministry. And believe me, God will deal with me if I step my hand and do something wrong about the money. I'm gonna be the first one to deal with. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse six. Go ahead. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Mm -hmm. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So you give them a little, you're going to get a little back. Just check your lifestyle. How's it working for you? How's it working? 
Everybody here is, a, is an individual. How is it working for you? Because people always say, man, I keep, I'm just having a hard time this place, having a hard time that place. Then you start talking about giving to the church. Well, I ain't got no money. I'm looking around like, you paying $2,000 a year on a cell phone. You buying Jordans, hundred, two hundred dollars You buying new dresses, new hats, all this stuff. What you talking about you ain't got no money? Who you fooling? Mm. If I can see it, don't you think God can see that? That's us. You smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. Cigarettes ain't cheap. You smoking cigars. All this stuff, smoking weed. <laughs> Preach it, good. All this stuff they do. I said, I ain't got no money. I ain't going to sacrifice my heart. This is what we got to understand. Be a cheerful giver. And you have more than what you think you have. I always tell my kids this. I said, look, once you start working, save half of what you got. But when they get out that realm and not saving, guess what happened? They ain't got no money. That's you ain't got no bills. Where your money going? Because your priorities are not in order. That's right. And that's what most of our people are. We are emotional buyers. Fleshly buyers. I want to get this, I want to get that. And then you think about giving it to God. Oh, you selected then. <laughs> Okay, I can't give in now. This is my money for the following week so I can eat out. He loves cheerful giver. That's all I'm trying to tell you. Be cheerful about what you give it. But if you ain't cheerful, this is what he's talking about. Go ahead. Verse 7. Every man according as he purposes in his heart. Yes, sir. So let him give, not grudgingly, or all uh, 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 necessity, uh -huh. for God loves the cheerful giver. That's what he's saying, you're cheerful. Don't give it, brethren. If you got a dollar, that's what you give, if you feel comfortable about giving, give it. Got a quarter, that's what you feel comfortable about giving, give it. Until you build your faith up, we understand that. It takes time, because you got a lot of lying, thieving preachers that stand where I stand. And they're living off the gospel. Mm -hmm. I go to work. This man go to work. We ain't got no salary. We work every day. Well, at least I work every day. I don't need to. Except But this is what we're talking about here. We fit with that? You don't have one more verse. Okay, go ahead. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always have an all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. I can testify that. I've been sufficient on everything. He take care of me. He take care of me. Amen. I ain't with lacking. Do it look like I've been lacking some meat, some food? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at y'all, I ain't been lacking meat. <laughs> this is what we got to understand. Now, he don't want us to be an emotional giver. A lot of this message might be sounding good to you right now, but don't give because you say, oh man, I want to give, 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 and not go in and check your finances. Go home and break this lesson down and you see what you can give that won't hurt you, then give it. I don't want nobody to be purposely putting their mouth, making their mouth say something that's going to hurt them because whatever you vow with your mouth to God, He wants you to pay it. He wants you to pay it. That's right. And I hear a lot of people, well, I'm going to give this, give it this, give it this. And they ain't even went back and look at what all the bills they had to pay. You can't give that. You got a light bill. You got all this stuff you got to do. Do what you can. I'm going to show you something. Let's go to Acts chapter 4 and verse 1. Let me show you an example of some of the emotional givers. Is that all right? Yes, sir. Preach. You want me to give I don't want to stop the flow, man. I don't want to stop it. <clears throat> Acts chapter 4, we're going to start at verse 1. I'm going to give you an example <coughs> of emotional givers. And a lot of times, you let your mouth, your mouth write a check that you're behind can't cash. Mm -hmm. And it costs you your life. 
Oh yeah, verse 1. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captains of the temple, mm -hmm. and the Sadducees came upon them. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. So these, these are disciples teaching in the name of Jesus. And they were grieved with them. Just like a lot of people think we don't believe in Jesus because we always talk about Israel. Jesus is the God of Israel. So these people agree with this. these are men of God because they were teaching in his name. So they're going to start doing these great miracles. Jump down to verse, uh, there's a lot of him, but we're going to jump down to verse 5. You can read the whole thing on your own. Go ahead. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes Mm -hmm. And Ananias, the high priest, and Capius, Capius, mm -hmm. and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindreds of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. So you got the high priest gathered together. These high priests, the men of God, were doing a great work. And the people seen this, and they were so, they so wanted to help them and support them. Go ahead. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked by what power or by what name have ye done this? Because they were doing so many miracles, healing, helping people out in their bodies. And they said, what power are you doing this in? And they told them, go ahead, jump down to verse 10. Go ahead. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, yes, sir. whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him do it, this man stand here before you hold. This is the power that they was doing it in the name of Jesus. In this book that we are reading today, these are just testimonies, the stories of what happened. Mm -hmm. He wants us to read this so we can be confident in the scriptures. Go ahead. This is the stone which was said, not of you builders, yes, sir. which is become the head of the corner. And that stone is Jesus. Amen. He's that stone. He's that cornerstone. Go ahead. Neither is there salvation in any other. Mm -hmm. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. See, we got people out here kick against the name of Jesus. They always say, man, now it's Jehovah. It's Yah. It's all this stuff. Jesus is the only name that we can be saved by. And they love to tell you, if you study with the Hebrews, they always kick against his name. That's just fool for thought. If you take them to the scripture so you'll know it's only one name you can be saved by. Jesus, period. Jump down to verse 29. I'm trying to get you to the point where these people was looking at all these great miracles. And they were so excited. They wanted to join up. And I, that's, why I, that's why I'm telling you, I don't want y'all to be so emotional and then you say something, you promise something to God and you don't carry, you don't go through with it. Verse 29, go ahead. And now, Lord, behold thy threatening and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. When they were speaking the word, they spoke with boldness. And they were looking, and these people were looking. Go ahead. By stretching forth thine hand to heal, mm -hmm. and, that, and that sign and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. Yes, sir. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they was assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. But do you understand the power when they speak it in the word of God, and the place is shaken? And they looking at these things, they're like, man, we want to be a part of that. Amen. Listen to what they did. Go ahead. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Mm -hmm. Neither said any of them that all of these of uh, the things which he possessed was his own. Mm -hmm. But they had all things common. So they said, everything that we have, we don't want nobody like it. We got lands, we got money, we're going to spread upon everybody. They, were, they was all on one accord saying they're going to sit over there and administer it so everybody have an equal amount. Go ahead. 
and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Yes, sir. And great grace was upon them all. Mm -hmm. Neither was there any among them that lacked. Yes, sir. For as many as were possessors of lands of houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold. So <laughs> neither one, all of them brought the land, they sold it and brought it to the priest and said, look, y'all delegate this out so everybody can have the same amount. So nobody will go lacking. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And laid them down at the apostles' feet and dis and, distrib and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. So they distributed amongst everybody as they needed. Jump down to verse 37. Go ahead. Having land sold it and brought the money, laid it at the apostles' feet. This is what everybody said that they was going to do. They made this promise out of their mouth. God listening to your promise. If you tell them you're going to do something with your money and possession, you better do it. There's always somebody out here who emotional with their giving. Write a check that they can't cash. Now let's go to chapter 5. Let's see if this, look at this husband and wife and what they did. Go ahead. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, uh -huh. his wife, sold a possession. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and kept back part of the price. His wife also being private to it brought a certain part, laid it at the apostles' feet. Now they agree they're going to sell everything they had, everybody on one accord, they're going to sell everything they had, and they're going to bring it to the apostles' feet. But this husband and wife, oh, we, that's too much, but they start looking at that money, that's too much. Well, we'll give them a little bit of this, but you made an agreement with God that you're going to sell all you have and bring it at your feet. Now, God look it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and to keep back part of the price of the land? I bet he was sitting there thinking, how in the world did he know that? Because God reads your mind. That's why I tell you, it ain't not up to me to say, oh, that's how she gave us a quarter of a dollar. She didn't give very much. But God know what you can give. And he, they made a promise that they was going to sell all their possessions they had the apostle feet. That's right. He said, why you lied to the Holy Spirit? Go ahead. While it remained, was it not thine own? Mm -hmm. And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Mm -hmm. Why hast thou, con thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. They lied to God. He said, you ain't lied to men, you lied to God. Emotional givers. Don't be so emotional when things are going happy, happy, go, joy, joy. You better go back and check your finances and see what you can and cannot do. It might cost you your life. Go ahead. Verse 5. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down, gave up the ghosts, and great fear came on all of them that heard these things. God killed them on the spot. Killed them on the spot. When he told him I gave up the ghosts, gave up his breath. Killed them on the spot.